Hey, 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 I'm Rod Bergeron, and today I'm going to show you how I go from a preliminary sketch that I do on site to a completed watercolor painting. So let's get at it. Okay, so what I normally do is when I'm working on site, I do a whole bunch of different drawings. And in a day when I'm out somewhere, I might do three, four, five different drawings. I might also take a hundred photos and eliminate you know 90 percent of them and just keep the ones that i think are relevant so here's some photos of this particular silver birch area and you'll see that this is in peter's woods this silver birch was uh dying it was uh, i think it's dead but it has some really interesting root systems where you can see through the bottom of it it was a really well lit day so there was a lot of really nice sunshine on the ground and so I thought I would capture it. So if we look at the sketch that I did, so this is one drawing that's sort of completed. This is another drawing that I did sometime later, um, just practicing the important elements, practicing where the holes were, those types of things. So what I wanna do now is I wanna transcribe this using the information from the photos and the videos and my own sketches onto this piece of paper. So I've already decided that I was going to do a pen drawing and then a watercolor painting on top of that. So I'm gonna just set this over to the side here and this is just gonna be for information. I, I know this area and I have this already sort of built up in my head. I have this piece of Canson watercolor paper which is 140 pound Canson normal watercolor paper probably my favorite paper to draw on, my favorite paper to um, work on overall, right? Okay, so let's get some of this information onto here. So I'm gonna think that this is about twice as high and about almost twice as wide as this thing. So everything that I'm gonna make on here is going to be about twice the normal size. So. This comes about halfway across the page, so I'm thinking somewhere there. So I'm gonna put my tree in, and my tree is going to just come down like that and come over in this general area like this. And there's another line that I had right beside it, and it's a different part of this. And I'm going to double up both of those lines. So I'm going to go back over both of these and I'm just going to double that up to give it some mass and some thickness. Now I'm gonna go over to the other side of the tree over here. This tree has a pretty good lean to it. So I'm gonna to try to capture some of that. All right, that. And then we're going to have this piece, which is going to come down something like that. All right, now I'm gonna start dealing with this hole that we have in here. And I think I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do this. And then there's a root that sort of comes out and comes down like this. Okay, so the I've done a bunch of cross hatching in here. I've done a bunch of curved hatching in here to you know to give it some some curvature. One of the things that are on this tree are all of these little um, I guess they're like uh, fungus that are growing on it. So I'm gonna put in a whole bunch of these. That's sort of the shape that they are. This curved shape with the flat bottom on it. Uh, so I'm just gonna put those in. Just. Basically the way that they have them on here is just a curve, flat bottom. And I'm just gonna go through here and put some in in some random spots. Uh -huh. 
And then over here, there are some long um, blades of grass. I forget exactly what this is called. Somebody told me once and um, forgive me, but I don't recall what it is. And I'm just gonna put some of this in just to fill in some areas there. Okay, so um, I have a lot of the good, a lot of the cross hatching in here that I, I really wanted to have in here. I have a lot of this that completed that I wanted to have in here. I'm gonna put in this little tree right here, but I'm gonna do it really quickly, really simply, okay? So it goes right off the page. I gotta move Darth Vader out of there, but it's going to go right off the page, okay? So I'm going to think about this. It's going to come out somewhere around here and it's gonna be one continuous line right off the page. So I'm gonna practice it in my head, practice it physically a couple of times, figure out where it's going to go. I'm gonna move my light around here a little bit. And then I'm just gonna do it in one continuous line, all right, right off the page. And then I'm gonna think about putting in the other side of this little tree and I'm gonna make this line broken a little bit okay just like that and I might even double this up a little bit double it up maybe here and then double it up here make it a little bit thicker give it a little bit more mass and then I'm going to just simply do what I've done here just some crooked little lines Every cup, you know, there's only about three or four of them that you need. And then real simply, again, a couple of these sort of um, not quite completed circles, okay, for the leaves. This is a very small tree. It has very few leaves to it. It's in a very shaded part of the woods, so it doesn't have a whole lot of leaves on it. I'm going to just put in, you know, just very few of those. You can always come back later, you know, if, if, there, if you look at it and you say, oh, it needs more of these, you can simply come back and add some more of those. All right, so we're ready to put some paint onto this. I'm gonna take my, um, I'm gonna take my book with my drawing on it and I'm gonna set it over here a little bit and I have my regular paint palette. I'm also gonna set my pen over there, my eraser and stuff. I don't need any of that. I have out here a couple of brushes. I'm probably going to do the majority of this with a large flat brush. But for right now, um, I have some paint already on here from painting yesterday, so I'm not gonna waste that. I'm just gonna put some good generous amount of water into this and in in the photo that I have there's a there's a hill in the background that comes down like this and so I'm going to I'm going to put that on here with this uh, green paint so I'm going to paint the the lower level of where I believe the hill is going to be but I'm going to put this in really thin okay so this is a very very light amount of green. I'm gonna put it right up to the trunk of the tree. And then of course, coming down the other side here. And I'm gonna paint it right off the page. So I'm gonna fill all that in. Again, this would be, so what technique would this be? The answer is this is going to be wet on dry. Okay, so you see I have a fair amount of paint mixed up for this. This is going on here. Long linear strokes. Fairly, fairly wet. See I have, you can see that paint moving around in there. Fairly wet. Lots of water though. 
and this is again this is dry this is wet on dry wet paint on a dry page all right so uh, we have that green paint on there it's drying up pretty well um, but I'm going to put in some um, other small areas down here that are going to be green I'm going to take my flat brush out of the water and I'm just going to wet this is a number four brush I'm just going to pick up some of this paint and I'm just going to paint a little bit of this area down here where there's some green all right so I'm going to take my tissue and I'm going to clean out my green right there okay so I cleaned out my green and I'm going to mix up a fair amount of blue um, very very light even lighter than this okay so I'm gonna take a fair amount of water you can see I think one of the things that um, I have always noticed about my students is there's not enough water on their page I think most people when you first start to watercolor paint don't use enough water so that's about the blue that it is that I'm going for here and I have a fair amount here so this should be enough to fill in the background of the sky here so I'm going to go right along the edge of this tree right down to where I had it green and I'm going to paint right over top of those Okay, so this is all pretty much dried up the way that I need it to dry up. Uh, remember what happens with um, watercolor paper is as soon as you put, as soon as it dries, it goes back to um, its original state. In other words, I can now wet one area here and the water will only run into that one particular area, okay? So we're going to continue to work um, fairly large and fairly expressively. So what I'm going to do right now is um, I'm going to wet my palette here and I'm going to pick up some green. Quite a bit of green because I got quite a bit of water here, but I'm going to pick up quite a bit of green pigment here. All right. Okay, and I splashed a little bit on my page there, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, this is all gonna be covered with green paint anyway, so don't worry about it too much at this point. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm gonna paint into the background here where there's going to be some trees and you can paint right over top of that little tree if you want to. If not, you can, you know, just paint around it like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I'm gonna paint a little bit of uh, tree where I want tree to be. And you can see I'm just wetting this. I, I was just wetting this and now I'm going to put in a fair amount of pigment and we're going to let that pigment just run into wherever it wants to go into that tree line or in, into that wet area, I should say. So hopefully it's going to create a tree line for me. I'm gonna put in quite a bit more here. Remember, just wet it wherever it is that you wanna wet it. Pick up a little bit more pigment here. Just gonna give it a little try over here. That's about what it is that I want. So I'm put this in like that. And you can see it's starting to move out of the area of high concentration into an area of lower concentration.
All right, so this is about as, it's, it's damp, it's not completely dry, but that's the way that I want this to currently be. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more um, green paint here and I'm gonna put it in. Again, this is going to be um, wet on dry or mostly dry, but this is where I'm going to start working on putting in this little bit of the dry riverbed in the background here. So I'm not, I'm not going to um, fill in all of this. Some of this I'm going to leave fairly open uh, like that, pretty much, pretty much like that. I'm gonna take a little bit more of this darker paint and bleed that into it like that. That's sort of what it is that I'm going for. All right, so um, now I'm gonna put in um, some of these trees in the background and we're gonna do that with a, a fairly light, thin wash of green. So you can see how thin that is. It's very, by thin I mean lots of water, um, not much pigment. And these are going to be just simply long uh, lines. You can see in the background here, I'll put, up, um, I'll put up the photo again, but you'll see there's lots of little trees in the background. And we're gonna put these in with just a few elongated strokes with the green like this and there are you know literally thousands and thousands of them but we're not going to put them all in we're going to put in some of them knock a little bit of paint off there and then we're going to put in some of the branches that are you know just going off and like that there's piles of them and then one of the things that I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put in a bunch of little um, speckles for the um, for the little tiny leaves in the background. And you can put in lots if you choose. I'm going to put in lots like that. I'm going to keep it away from my tree trunk here. And when I get any on my tree trunk, I'm going to very quickly take my tissue and clean it off. All right, I might get some on over here. You see, I got a couple on there. Just grab your tissue and pick those up right away. And yeah, that's not too bad. All right, so put in a few more here. Keep your brush, you know, keep your um, tissue with you. right off the bat all right that's not too bad that's sort of turn out the way that I want it to be so that's good okay so I think we're ready to do this tree and this tree is going to be gray and it's going to be Payne's gray so Payne's gray is a bit of a strange color it is really um, black with a bluish tinge to it and we're going to do all of this um, wet on wet, but I'm gonna mix up my Payne's Gray first. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water in the center of this. All right. And more water than that, and more water than that. Remember what I said before, most, I believe most paint, 
most people who begin painting with watercolor don't use enough water all right so you want to mix up a lot of water for this and i'm going to take this tree and i'm going to take this wet brush or i'm going to wet this brush i should say and i'm going to paint in a lot of areas of this and i hope it's showing up on camera but i'm making this I'm not painting all, I'm not wetting all of this area that's the tree. I'm wetting some of it. Because I don't want this paint gray to go everywhere. I want this to be, you know, again, I'm, I'm working in expressionism. So I'm trying to express the way that I think about this place. And I'm trying to express the way that I feel about this place. But I'm not trying to make an exact photographic copy of this place. All right, that's pretty wet. I'm gonna mix up my Payne's Gray. So I got some water here. I wet this and it turned out a little bit mucky. So I'm actually going to take all that out. If you think that your paint, you know, has been contaminated or your tray or your mixing area has been contaminated, don't use it, all right? Don't, don't just go ahead and say, oh, that's, that's the best I can do. No, it's not. Do a little bit better. Make it a little bit, you know, I'm trying to do a, a finished artwork here. So I'm not trying to, uh, this isn't a study. This isn't something that I'm hoping the best for. This is going to be a piece that I want to be, you know, something that I would be proud to hang on my wall at home. I'm going to try my Payne's Gray here. That's pretty good. I'm going to put this in here, in here, like this. I'm gonna keep tapping it till I get the paint to come off my brush and onto my page. I'm gonna keep putting it in there, keep putting it in there, and make sure it's wet everywhere that you want it to be wet. And put a little bit of gray a little bit of Payne's Gray into some of these places. Like this. A little bit down here. Put a little bit more up in there. And then, you guessed it, I'm going to do this. Just joining the wet areas together with my fingers. And you can see where it's not quite wet or it's not where it's not wet where I want it to be. I want a little bit down here. All right, run that around again. And you can see where it started to split out where it's a little bit blue and then the gray right beside it. All right. And you see, I keep touching my page like that all the time with my finger just to make the one area connect to the next area. And this little tree Right here, I want it to be Payne's Gray also. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just gonna go right up along there, right where it is. Just like that, take that out maybe. All right. Run that back down like that. And that's it. I'm walking away. I'm going to say that's as good as it's going to get. I'm walking away. We'll come back and see what it looks like when it dries. All right, so that's what it looks like with the mat on it. Uh, I think it turned out all right. I really 
the green in the background turned out the way that I was thinking about the green in the background. The trees in the background turned out the way that I was thinking about them. The Payne's gray on the uh, silver birch turned out exactly the way that I thought it should turn out. And so I think that's what for me makes it into a completed painting. If you learned anything from this, please give me a thumbs up. If you're currently a subscriber, I thank you very much. And if you're not currently a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you again next time.